Every night, half the world goes dark. Power outages aren't mere inconveniences, they're threats to health, safety, and economic stability. But what if our next power plant orbited above the clouds? That question is the driving force behind Japan's Oisama mission, which aims to harvest sunlight 400 kilometers above Earth and beam it down as continuous on-demand power. Electricity underpins modern life. Yet for millions around the globe, reliable power remains elusive. According to the International Energy Agency, more than 650 million people still lack any access to electricity and another 1 billion endure frequent blackouts that disrupt schools, hospitals and businesses. Even in the developed nations, aging grids, extreme weather and cyber attacks can plunge whole regions into darkness. In the recent years, major storms knocked out power from millions across Europe and North America, while heat waves and wildfires in Australia and California prompted rolling blackouts. The idea of harvesting sunlight in space dates back more than half a century. In November 1968, American engineer Peter E. Glaser published the concept of a solar power satellite in the journal Science. His design called for enormous arrays of solar panels in geostationary orbit, converting sunlight into microwaves and beaming them down to huge ground antennas or rectennas on Earth. Glaser secured a US patent in 1973, but the soaring cost of rockets and sheer size of the structure kept the dream grounded. During the 1970s and 1980s, NASA and US Department of Energy conducted feasibility studies that confirmed the physics but warrant or prohibitive expenses. In the decades that followed, advances in lightweight materials, phased array antennas and reusable rockets steadily chipped away at those barriers. Yet, no nation had yet attempted at a full space-to-earth power transmission. That changed in 2025, when Japan launched Oisama. A cooperative effort by Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Japan Space Systems, Nido and Mitsubishi Electric. Weighing just 180 kg with a 2 square meter solar collector and onboard battery, Oisama will operate in low Earth orbit at about 400 km altitude. Once its panels deploy and its converters come online, the satellite will transform sunlight into microwaves and aim at a 1 kW beam, enough to run a dishwasher for an hour at a ground station near Suwa, Japan. Space Solar works by using microwaves as unseen highways, ferrying sunlight's power from orbit straight down to Earth. Oisama's solar arrays produces direct current electricity that feeds a microwave transmitter tuned to around 5.8 GHz, a frequency chosen for its balance of beam focus and atmospheric transparency. On the ground, a phased array rectenna composed of many small antenna elements captures this incoming microwave energy and converts it back to DC power, which is then conditioned for use. Ground experiments have already demonstrated the concept on a smaller scale. In 2015, JXA and Mitsubishi Heavy Industry beamed 1.8 kW over 50 m with pinpoint accuracy using a prototype transmitter and receiver. A few years later, TEST extended that range to 500 m at 10 kW, proving that phased array control can steer and focus the beam even as transmitter and receiver shift position. Safety concerns about microwave exposures have been addressed. Through strict power density limits, at the plant level, the beam is no more dangerous than a strong Wi-Fi hotspot. Yet, operating in space introduces new challenges. The satellite and ground arrays must track each other precisely, compensating for the satellite's 28,000 km per hour orbital speed and the curvature of the Earth. Atmospheric effects, rain, humidity, and turbulence can scatter or attenuate microwaves, requiring adaptive beam steering and power adjustments. Oisama's mission will test these control in the real world, setting the stage for larger, more powerful systems. Beneath Oisama's orbital path lies a fenced field in central Nagano Prefecture where engineers have assembled the Rectenna farm that will catch the satellite's beam. Spread over several hectares, 
The installation features dozens of flat, mesh-like panels, each embedded with thousands of tiny antenna elements and rectifying diodes. Pilot signal antennas in the field receive a continuous reference beacon from Oisama, guiding the beam steering system to maintain alignment with a fraction of a degree. During an Oisama overpass, motion capture cameras, infrared sensors and alignment lasers will synchronize transmitter and receiver. As the satellite appears on the horizon, ground station operators will track its trajectory, gradually locking the microwave beam onto the array. Once the beam hits home, the rectenna's diode bridges will convert high-frequency AC into DC electricity, which is then measured, stored in local batteries and routed into demonstration loads, lighting arrays, small motors and electronic devices. This step is crucial. It validates end-to-end -end energy transfer from the vacuum of space to everyday appliances. Success here will guide designs for larger farms, automated tracking algorithms, and safety protocols needed for public acceptance. It will also lay groundwork for regulatory frameworks on orbital transmissions and ground-based microwave zoning. A single Oisama is a teardrop in ocean of space, but its ripple effects would redefine energy systems. The ultimate vision lies in geostationary orbit 36 kilometers from Earth, where a vast continuous solar farm could beam gigawatts of power to rectenna farms on the ground. Such megastructures might span tens of kilometers across and feed whole regions or desert basins, turning barren landscapes into energy export hubs. Several nations and private ventures have announced plans. China's Academy of Space Technology aims for a 100 kilowatt demonstration by 2028. The U.S. Naval Research Laboratory is exploring follow-on missions to its 2020 PRAM experiment on the X-37B space plane, and startups like Etherflux plan satellite constellations to deliver targeted power beams to military outposts and disaster zones by 2026. The European Space Agency is funding research into wireless power transmission standards and orbital traffic management, anticipating a crowded field of power satellites. Beyond large nations and corporations, hopeful use cases include remote clinics in Africa running MRI machines, emergency shelters in hurricane zones powering water desalination, and offshore platforms ferrying electricity to ships without burning heavy fuel oil. Even residential microgrids could subscribe to orbital power, topping off rooftop batteries when local solar dips at twilight. Challenges like space debris risks, frequency coordination, international regulations and public perception of beaming energy remain overhead. But the groundwork is laid. Oisama's success will validate the core physics, control systems and safety measures required. It will also galvanize investment and policy support, turning a half-century-old concept into a competitive global race.